the topic for today's presentation is multiple intelligence. Multiple intelligence theory is given by Howard Gardner. Before we go to the theory, we will try to understand intelligence. The concept of intelligence has come long back and uh, we have a psychometric test also which are measuring intelligence with a high level of validity and reliability. So, we have standardized test developed by Win and Simon, Wechlers, Bhatia Battery, Ravens uh, Progressive Metrics and these tests are as scientific as thermometer. Like thermometer we can use anywhere, maybe in Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, it will be measuring the temperature, whatever the temperature is with the human being. Similar way the intelligence also can be measured. When we see the measure of intelligence, then the understanding comes, mostly the items are measuring either cognition that is mental ability or language that is proficiency of the language. So, it shows like these tests are biased towards mental aspect and uh, language aspect. Howard Gardner has started his project that is called uh, Project Zero. He understood that uh, in a human being or in students, there are something different more than the what we are measuring in intelligence. Because in this project, he was measuring cognitive aspect through science and arts. And while measuring, he saw there are children who have something different and that too in a depth. So, why it is there? That is the question which has come in his mind. That question has asked him to go for the wide range of data and that is the reason he has in his sample apart from the students, those who are regularly going to the school, he has some uh, gifted children, some uh, children those who have a low IQ and uh, those who has brain damaged and uh, the one have a uh, neurological problems. So, that way this kind of uh, wide range of students when he is gathered, then he has built the understanding that uh, there are uh, certain factors which are working with the brain. For example, biological factor, what he has seen, if the brain is damaged in one part, that is a language part, so the language is affected, but the intelligence of that person, if uh, in other part he is more intelligent, like in a music part, if he is more intelligent, then uh, that intelligence can be captured. And through that intelligence, one can uh, reach to the language part because of the plasticity of the brain. So, that understanding has clearly shown that there is no one intelligence, there are many intelligences. And once he get this understanding, then he has tried to compare our traditional classroom with the MI classroom. So, traditional classroom is mostly run by the teacher, by the syllabus. Whereas, MI classroom is uh, run by the students and uh, run by the curriculum where uh, one topic can be taught in a different ways. So, this kind of difference uh, when he has seen in his experimental research, then he thought uh, yeah, there are some students who are sharply different than the other. In Indian context, if we have to understand multiple intelligence theory, then uh, we can give a very good example of uh, Lata Mangeshkar. If we go and test the intelligence of Lata Mangeshkar, it will be coming either average or above average, whatever intelligence she has, that can be measured through psychometric test. But when it comes to the music, she is gifted, she is genius. She is the one who can understand the raga and uh, uh, which raga the song is sung and if the raga is going off track, that also she can understand very well. So, that kind of intelligence she is having. So, he understood that there is a difference between one person can have lot of potentials, abilities and strength in some areas, but when we are measuring the intelligence, we are not really giving attention to those intelligences. In the classrooms, teachers are most of the time 
giving attention to the intelligent boys, those who are good in uh, their maths or in languages and the one who are good in other subjects, they are not getting attention. So, uh, it is something like a win-lose situation. But when it comes to multiple intelligences, the belief is every child is intelligent in some of the other areas. Every child is doing good in some of the other areas. So, with that belief, it is very clear that uh, children, those who are in the classroom are getting attention from the teachers because they can attract in uh, other areas like in sports, like in uh, uh, special intelligence, sometimes their drawing comes out par excellent, where they can give three dimension picture and very easily they give. So, in intelligence there is no scope for these children to show their talent, whereas in multiple intelligence there is a chance for them to show their talent. So, in this situation we have a win-win situation in the classroom. So, having this understanding of different intelligence, I will give you another example. In this example, I will be speaking about uh, Sachin Tendulkar. Sachin Tendulkar, if you go for the intelligence, it will be the same. But uh, when it comes to the kinesthetic intelligence, bodily intelligence, then he is again genius, far excellent than other players because he understands uh, the kind of ball which is coming, how to handle the ball, how to bend the body, how to the position, how much to change the position and in this ball, he takes immediate decision what to do with this ball. And uh, if he knows also the ball has come which he cannot play and this ball will, I will be out, he knows exactly this ball has come in such a way where I have not played well and I am out. So, he is aware of that also. So, this thing is not measured in intelligence. So, these two examples are giving us very clear understanding that Howard Gardner in his project 0 have tried to understood the different type of people, their potential, their strength, their measures, how they do good in another areas and then he has come out with 9 intelligences. Now, we will be starting with uh, each intelligence in detail and trying to understand the characteristics of the intelligence. The first intelligence is linguistic intelligence. In linguistic intelligence, mostly those who are intelligent, talented, have high potential in the area are people who are good at the language. So, they are the one who read once and they have a uh, better understanding of what they have read, they listen very carefully, they write very well and simultaneously they are the one who are very much critic about the language also. So, anybody is not using correct language or making faults in the language, it goes in their ear and uh, they immediately correct it. So, this kind of intelligent people have flair for language also. So, mostly two to three languages are very easy for them to understand and uh, express. Those who are linguistically intelligent people, they have seen they are very good writers also. They write novels, they write dramas, they write plays, they write movie scripts and in such a detailed way that uh, the language does not come in their way. So, these people have uh, special characteristics. Now, we will be seeing all the characteristics of uh, linguistically intelligent people. They are the one who likes to tell stories and make stories, make poems and uh, good in jokes also. Uh, I met one of the student who has a linguistic intelligence and uh, two hours we spent together when we went for the picnic and continuously two hours one after one he has told jokes, those jokes which we have not heard. So, he had that memory, he had a language and he, he knows how to present those jokes also. So, it is only possible those who are genius in the area of language. Now, we will be seeing the characteristics of uh, linguistically intelligent children. They notice grammatical mistakes often speaks, 
of what they have read, likes to use fancy words, loves word games, cherishes their book collection, easily remembers quotes and famous sayings, likes puns and rhymes, enjoy writing, enjoy foreign languages, always enjoy class which is a language class. It is very clear that they like language teacher, they like language class and they think they are doing very good when it comes to the language and that is the reason they take part uh, in a school also in debate or in a drama or uh, maybe allocation because in these areas they can do excellent. Now we will be going to the second intelligence that is interpersonal intelligence. Interpersonal intelligence students are mostly uh, those who like to be with other children, they like to study in a group, in a team, they want to work when uh, other children are around them, they always want to have a company with uh, other people, they can be elder, they can be younger, but they like to be in a group, they love to go for parties, they love where the crowd is moving to do certain things, maybe they are interested or not interested, but uh, among the people they get high energy. So these are the interpersonal students and uh, the best part of that they are extrovert, so they do not like to be alone anytime, it is always good for them if they are moving with people. Mostly it is seen, those who are interpersonal people they do not have intrinsic motivation, they are motivated to do things if some people are doing, their friends are doing, so they do. We have seen many times in a, in a university and a colleges also, if the friends are taking the subject commerce, they also follow their friends and uh, take uh, the subject so they can be with those friends for next three years. So they like the subject, they do not like the subject, but the most important thing is uh, to be with the friends. So their decisions are based on a public around them, the decisions they take to please the public and if their friends are angry with them, if they do not invite them, then they feel very upset about it. So crowd is giving them energy. So these kind of um, uh, students, they like to do combined studies and in the combined study when the discussion is taking place, it uh, gives them better understanding of the subject. Now we will be seeing the characteristics of uh, interpersonal students. The first characteristic of interpersonal student is empathetic and followed with extroverted, enjoy social events, love groups and crowds, enjoying teaching others, have many friends, enjoy team sports, like to counsel others, love meeting new people, cooperative in groups, sensitive to others moods. So these are the students who always help other students without they are even asking them. Because they are sensitive, they understand from the body language or from others if they understand somebody is in a crisis or in a conflict, they are there always to help them and they get lot of satisfaction after helping the other students. Now we are moving to the third intelligence that is intrapersonal intelligence. Intrapersonal intelligence students, they like to be alone, they are very reflective, they have a right kind of self-concept, they understand themselves very well, they understand their strengths and weaknesses and they are the one who like to study alone. They are not a team person. If uh, some assignments are given them to do in a pair or a team, they will see to it that uh, they will be doing separately and asking them to give that space so they can do the assignments and then compile with the other students. Because when the group is there, they are very uncomfortable, they do not like to talk to the group, they have a suggestion, but uh, it is very difficult for them to give the suggestion because they are not sure they will be accepting, not accepting and they do not like to even spend time with them. They want to go 
alone and uh, prefer to sit alone in the library. Hours together they can sit in the library with books. These are the people who even sit near the seashore. Hours together they can see the sea water, but they do not get bored because all the time they are thinking about the experiences, reflecting on the experiences and trying to understand what is happening. So, they have a very clear cut idea of what is happening around them. This is showing that uh, in a class, if the child is not speaking, it does not mean that child is not interested in the class. He is learning in the class, he is listening very carefully, he is absorbing the class, he is understanding the content, but he does not like to speak in the class, he does not like to give answer in the class. And if you try to see these children very closely, then you will understand they write very well because they think many times before they put it in the words. So, they do things independently and they enjoy doing it. They can watch televisions hours together and if they are free, they will prefer to be alone at home with the books rather than going with the friends and partying. So, this is basic difference between the intrapersonal intelligent people. Now, we will be seeing the characteristics of uh, intrapersonal students. They are uh, introverted, prefer working alone, philosophical, self-aware, perfectionist, often thinks of self-employment, enjoys journaling, intuitive, independent, spends time thinking and reflecting, likes learning about self. So, from this it is clear that uh, whatever they do, they do it in a perfection way. So, they are very critical about themselves, they are very critical around those people with them and try to correct them. So, it shows that uh, they try and try till that they reach to the perfection. So, many times uh, it is seen that uh, they have lot of uh, anxieties and stresses because uh, uh, they want to reach to the perfection. And uh, intuitiveness is so high that uh, when they think it will happen that way, most of the time it happens that way because this intuition is coming from lot of reflection. So, they are amazing uh, students and they do very well in the classroom and they are genius when it comes to the working alone.